Hello everyone. Now that we're in June and we've had our first real cold spell that signals the arrival of winter, let's take a look at some June gardening tips. June is a month of little pay, lots of hard work with very little reward. Um, not that there's no reward mind you, and we'll look at what flowers you can keep an eye out for over the next few weeks. But you might think that plants stop growing during this time, but that's actually not true. And this is especially true in, in the warmer coastal areas that, that we live in. But even in the colder regions, plants are just focusing on other priorities. They're sending down food to their roots, getting things ready for the, the next season, um, going into summer. Um, and provided you don't have to worry about frost in your area, you, you can still plant pretty much all throughout winter. I often see better growth from plants that have been planted during the winter months because they've had a couple of months to just get used to their environment and settle down. As far as lawns go, it's a good idea to allow your lawn to grow slightly longer during the cooler, darker winter months because what this does is it helps insulate the roots from the cold weather. June is also a pruning month. Uh, many fruit trees benefit from good pruning around now. Um, so plums, peaches, apricots, most vines uh, will benefit from a good pruning. Um, grape vines generally you should wait until the last of the leaves have fallen off before pruning them back. The, and the main reason for pruning is to stimulate growth for the, for the next growing season. But it's also to allow light and to allow air through the, the plant so that it prevents diseases and pests from taking hold. Other plants that benefit from pruning around now are your late summer and early autumn flowering plants. So things like Plumbago, Barleria, Tecumaria, Hypoestes, Plectranthus, Ratirospolias, and even Salvias. The general rule of thumb is to always prune just after flowering. We've just had a, a cold snap and if you've got any plants that have been damaged by the frost, don't prune off any of that the frost damage because that's the plant's sort of natural protective barrier against any future cold. And also what happens is it could stimulate the plant to start growing, especially if we have a, like a little bit of a warm uh, period. And then any future cold snaps, you'll actually end up damaging the plant a whole lot more. Many people swear by using a uh, pruning sealer on cut stems and actually there's been research that shows that it actually does more damage to plants. Plants have their own built-in abilities to, to heal themselves, so rather let the plant take care of itself. Although roses may not be looking great at the moment, you should generally wait until around about August before doing any major pruning of roses. But while we're on the subject of roses, if you need to move a rose for any reason, now's the best time to do it. As with most replanting, you need to cut back before. Prune roses back by about a third before transplanting. And what you've got to do is you've got to slice down around the plant with your spade in a circle about 20 centimeters away from the stem. Then what you do is you, you lift the root bowl carefully, making sure that you don't disturb the roots too much. Roses don't like their roots being disturbed. Um, make sure that you already have the other hole prepared in advance uh, and what you'll do is you'll move the plant straight away into the, the new hole. The best thing to do is to make sure that the plant's oriented the same way it was previously. So whichever side is facing north, try and keep that side still facing north. Once it's in the ground, place some compost on the surface and just give it a good soaking just to get it settled down. Here in the warmer coastal areas, you can still feed your roses with something like 315 or 234, and you need to water them probably about once a week at the moment. You could also, if it has been raining recently, you could also treat them for black spot one last time before we go into winter. And instead of pruning now, you can just deadhead the roses, and the plants might give you a few more flowers over the next few weeks. If you live in the windy Western Cape, you should probably make sure that your standard roses or small trees are properly staked and, and tied over the next few months. Uh, it also might be a good idea to just tie everything down. You don't want your garden furniture going flying next door. Otherwise, even just put away your garden furniture for the next few, few months. As for food gardening, 
Lettuce can still be grown, but so can cucumbers, squashes, pumpkins, maize, tomatoes, beans. Avos would probably still be fruiting nicely at the moment. They'll probably be coming to the end of their season, but so should lemons. Um, citrus trees should be fed with something like 315 or 815 granular fertilizer. And you should probably be foliar feeding any small uh, citrus trees or citrus trees in pots with a decent foliar feed. Mangoes and lychees should be kept dry over the next month or so to promote flowering and obviously fruiting in the next season. Also, while we're thinking about food, why not make a bird feeding station uh, just for the winter months when food is maybe a little bit scarce for birds, you could actually be encouraging birds into your garden. You can also add crushed eggshells into the soil which will help feed the plants, but you might actually find that birds will come and eat some of the crushed eggshells in preparation for laying eggs in the spring. Everybody loves colour in their garden and if you're wanting some instant colour you could always use things like petunias or pansies or alisum. But if you're wanting some indigenous alternatives you could try things like dimorphotheca or nemesia or even good old fahis which will flower abundantly through these dry cold winter months. Most aloes are starting to look truly spectacular now and also clivias are starting to flower. If you're wanting to promote flowering in your clivias, rather keep them dry over this period and you'll see a lot more flowers coming up. Winter is a good time to divide and replant succulents. Just make sure you leave enough stem to allow good rooting. Things like Echeveria, Sedum, Crassula and even plants like Frangipani or Euphorbia can be planted during winter and they'll take during winter. What you've just got to do is make sure that any freshly cut stems are actually left out to dry for about a week before you replant them and put them in a nice sunny spot with good draining soil and within a few weeks you'll actually start to see new roots forming. So I hope that gives you some ideas about what to plant during the month of June. If you have any questions about winter gardening or even gardening in general, just feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. If you're enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe and you'll get notified as soon as a new video is up. Otherwise, happy gardening.